Hello guys, how's it going? Good to see you again. Especially after that last episode was so exciting. Let me fix the lighting there like I always gotta do. I'm gonna get got myself a, a soda. How's it going guys? Hey yeah yeah, what's going on? Good to see you over here. You asked really great questions last time when we uh, when I had my guests on. You know, I really appreciate that. Very thoughtful. Um, but yeah, those those two are you know seriously uh, amazing, talented, um, man, just engineers, and just really proud to know them. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to having more guests on. But you know, today's a normal episode, and you know we like normal episodes too, right? <laughs> hey, Electrica, what's going on? Glad to see you here. I think we're gonna keep it simple today. So, um, uh, I have, I guess, kind of like a reverse engineering exercise. So, well, sort of. So, I have this picture. I'm gonna bring this mic a little closer to my face. So I have this picture, right? Um, this picture used to be one of those water filtering pictures. Like there's there's an attachment that goes um, on the inside. Since then, um, I found it kind of difficult to find replacement filters for it. And also the the filter that you know this came with before wasn't even that good. Like it filtered so slowly. So you know I'm just gonna turn it into a you know regular water pitcher, but you know, I want to see if I can model and 3D print, you know, something to just close off the top. So when I, you know, when I put it in the fridge, you know, the, the water doesn't slosh out and, you know, get all my veggies wet and stuff like that. So how would I model a, a, a top that kind of fits right on and, you know, has like the hole for the spout. So that's kind of my goal here. And I think that, um, this is gonna work off the question that um, Virus had, you know, a couple streams ago about uh, sketch pictures and what you can do with them. And Sebastian's here. How's it going, Sebastian? Good to see you here. So, uh, yeah. But before we get into that, let's uh, take a look at the uh, look at the Discord. So, not too many updates since last time, but that's all good. You know, Yaya saying, you know, he was digging into his files and he saw this amazing, uh, uh, you know, some, some woodwork working going on here. And he has the animation of a ghost having a, a good time pulling the drawers open and closed. Very good animation. In the tech help, um, looks like Virus is playing around with, uh, uh, with Blender, by the way. So if anyone knows Blender, like I played around with it a little bit, but... Definitely, I don't think I'm, you know, that proficient at it. You know, give Virus a hand here. I know uh, Nuredin over here has been helping him out, and you know that's that's just really really awesome. Oh, it's Andy. Made made for making. How's it going? He says boo. Do you not like? Do you not like Blender? <laughs> yeah. You know, we we're, we're all 3D modelers here, and we just got to get our work done. No matter, no matter what software it takes, you know? But, uh, yeah. So, again, taking a look at this thing, you may know that there is a scale tool in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS for bringing in sketch pictures, but how do you exactly bring this in as a sketch picture? Well, I'll show you one way of doing it. So, provided that your object is small enough, you can actually trace, bring that closer so you can see the line there. You, I trace the profile onto a piece of graph paper. And I scanned it into my computer just using a, a regular 2D scanner. Need for making saying, no, I do like Blender. Use it a slight bit, useful in some cases. Yep, I agree. I totally agree. Um, but yeah, let me, uh, go to my, uh, here we go. So let's see what, if you scan this, this is the shape that I get. 
And um, especially if you're gonna do this, if you have graph paper, that's what I recommend the most because um, uh, the graph paper is very consistent in size for the for the squares, which is kind of hard to see. But if I zoom in, there you can see them a little bit better. The graph paper I have is just like engineering computation pad, you know, sold in in the United States. It is five squares per inch, and that's like exact, basically. So I'll be able to scale this picture appropriately. But let's say you don't have graph paper. What are your options? Well, if you have one of those transparent rulers or um, or protractors, you can actually put here. Let me drag this over. You put you put your ruler in the copy machine and then put your uh, trace template on top of it and then you can scan and you get this very nice pattern so you can actually use your scale tool just measure six inches with respect to this and then it'll be the perfect size when you bring it into SOLIDWORKS garlic trader what's up what's going on my dude glad to have you here we're just talking about some uh, my little plan to reverse engineer uh, make a custom like top for my, uh, my water pitcher um, so out of these two which do I prefer I think I like this one a little bit better um, because you know I don't have to really work you know kind of work around the image of the uh, the protractor there but also you know the protractor has some thickness it'll bunch up the paper just a little bit I think it's very um, it, it's just very uh, What's the word? Negligible. Yeah, I don't think it'll affect your final result uh, that much. So I'm probably going to use this one, but I just want to show you, um, you know, a couple of uh, techniques that I've used historically. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. We'll, we'll throw that in there. Your favorite cousins are watching. <laughs> Angelica, that's my, that's my very, very beloved cousins. Showing me some uh, support while I uh, while I try and uh, figure out how to put a top on this little picture. I really appreciate that. I also appreciate Raj, who has just showed up. He says hi, Rob. Hello, Raj. Glad glad you can make it over here. So, um, I'm gonna show you a little trick that I like to do when working with sketch pictures. So you know I can start a sketch just go straight into sketch picture and uh, go into this folder and pull this uh, I'm gonna do low resolution and you know I have the scale tool I can play around with it but before I do this I want to step back and do one more prerequisite step so something that I was able to measure from the water pitcher is the distance from the top to the very back and you know according to my little note that is nine and three sixteenths of an inch and so before I put this picture in here I'm gonna back out of that top plane and let's get a center line get the middle boy and put him in the middle where he belongs and get the center line to say nine and three three sixteenths there you go so you leave that and then you start another sketch and then you bring in your sketch picture and now you might be thinking why did I do that well one of the tough aspects about um, bringing in a picture to trace is that not only getting the size right but to get its orientation and angle correct because there's always going to be a little bit of error of how I put the piece of paper in the machine there's always going to be a little bit of error of me putting putting the paper and the picture together you know I didn't put it dead center on the paper so to have a guide will be very very help very helpful as you'll see here in a second all right so uh, I think what I'll do here is I'll grab this and I'll put it right here on this green line and then extend this out so you know with the paper yeah, 
maybe we don't have to zoom in this much, but this distance is exactly seven inches. So now I can go ahead and bring this over. And now you can see that um, the line representing the measurement I took in real life, like I did it with a measuring tape and the one from the image basically match up almost perfectly. And you know, that's a good way to corroborate to make sure, hey, did I scale this the right way? You know, it's a, it's a double check. But also I can use it to, you know, I could say that, you know, the middle of this is like here. Move that over there. Middle of this is like here. And this is a little bit off to the left, so I might need to, to rotate it clockwise, like a fraction of a degree. So if I do point, oh, I might have to do negative. Yeah, silly engineering makes me think counterclockwise positive. Put that there. Let's see. Uh, I might have to do it a little bit more. So let's do 359 and a half. And it's just kind of guess and check. And you know, the closer with this, you know, the the better chance that uh, your 3D print will actually uh, match up here. So this needs to go to the right and, and to the right. So it needs to rotate a little more. Maybe a oops, I meant to put two five. And that looks pretty close, you know. So you can see that there was just a little bit, um, I needed to rotate the paper a little bit because I didn't place the, uh, the water pitcher perfectly on my piece of paper when I traced it. Oh, you're print, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm planning to print it, you know. I mean, I guess you could just use it without it, right? But, you know, it's like if you put if you put a pitcher, you know, that's very full, you know, aggressively in your fridge, it might sploosh out. So, you know, it's just going to be like a, a very thin cap. So I don't expect this to take very long, but I think, um, you know, I got a question about this, uh, you know, just last week about, you know, how you can rescale pictures. But also I wanted to show some techniques that I like to use when I reverse engineer, so... But yeah, we're 3D printing this eventually. Um, yep, we can get out of the sketch. And of course, using symmetry, we can go ahead and start a third sketch. Remember to don't draw your actual sketch entities on the, on the picture itself. It makes it hard to separate and it's just generally annoying. Will you show slicing? I might, yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll tr may, uh, I might have to break it into pieces. I don't know if I'm gonna p print it on my Mark Forge. I don't know how much that'll cost actually. Or on the Sindo. But we can play around with it. Any other techniques to rescale pictures? I guess, I guess there is one more. So, you know, the, the two that I showed you here is, um, you can use the blue scale tool that I just that I just showed you. Here, let me uh, let me save this real quick. That was yesterday's um, picture. Huh. Okay, so there is the scale tool, which you know doesn't allow me to. Here, let me just drop it in again. Hello. So the first method, scale tool. This got added 2015, I believe. So that's method one. Method two is to draw your sketch entity before and then arrange your picture on top of it. So I kind of did a hybrid of the two, um, the hybrid of the two methods. Um, a third method is, um, I, I guess I don't use it. I, I basically use these two, but here just for just for giggles you know if you do a 2d scan of a of a picture you and you know your paper size you know you, you can go ahead bring this in 
And if you're if you trust the way it's scanned in, you can actually say if you know your paper size. You know, I know um, a United States letter sheet is uh, 11 inches long, and then it'll just resize the picture, and then you know that's it. <laughs> so that's that's the third way I could think of. And um, yeah, Brandon Navarro, how's it going, dude? It's been a while. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you could could make it. Yeah, we're uh, just doing a bit of doing a bit of solid works here. Um, but yeah, you know, once you get this in here, you can go ahead and start tracing. Yeah, what I might do, I really like style splines, but they're hard to draw sometimes. So I'm just gonna draw a regular spline, which is a lot easier to handle. You know, so with regular splines, you start at one end, you go, you touch any hills and valleys, so that's like a hill, that's a hill, and there's the end. You then fix the, the little arrows that happen at the end. And actually for this arrow, since you need it to be, to have a smooth transition, you at least need this to be horizontal. It needs to be horizontal to, uh, to just, you know, be smooth as it goes across that transition. Yeah, it looks like Garlic Trader really liked that. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you found that helpful, dude. It's great. Oh yeah, and uh, to answer Brandon's question, I have this like water pitcher here that used to filter water, but you know, I can't find filters anymore, so I'm just gonna use it as a regular pitcher. But, you know, I wanna 3D print like a top for this thing. So that's what we're, that's what we're um, doing. So I, I like traced out, you know, the the shape like this, and that's what that's what we see on the screen here. Do, do, do. There we go. So yeah, we get this, and now we can play around with that. And then once you fix the ends, you can go ahead and play with the middle ones. So maybe I'll take this direction and just like yeah, just move it like that. also just leave it with this hmm. yeah so just kind of adjusting this and I'm not gonna stress about it too much because I'm gonna convert this into style spline which actually changes it up a little bit but the point is you know if you want a style spline you just um, get yourself a regular spline get it kind of close and then right click and then say convert to style spline. And I think I showed this um, last stream as well. But it's such a useful trick. There we go, we can pull that. Um, I kind of want to delete this point. I think it's, it might be too much. I'll leave it there for the time being because we got to stretch this boy out. Pull that back this way. Yeah, this is one of those things like I can't let my perfectionism uh, get to me. Yeah, I let me right click on that point and say delete. I think it's too much. There we go. And then that I gotta pull that out yeah this is definitely the most time-consuming part especially if you want like a 3d print to like you know fit pretty well okay that looks pretty good garlic saying uh, I've used Rhino 6 in the past scaling a picture in that software included more steps Nice to see SolidWorks has a has a couple options. Yeah, that's that's good. And um, you know, there, Rhino is something I've always wanted to try out. It's got a, um, I've heard it can do a lot of cool things with surfacing. So you know, it's been on my bucket list to try it out at least once. You know. But yeah, you know, I feel like every CAD has its um, you know, has its uh, strong points and benefits and stuff like that.
Yeah, let's do saying, hey Rob, when you take a break, check Discord. I, I wanted to, I posted my try on something like this. Yeah, for sure. Here, let me, uh, I'll fully define this and, you know, I'll, I'll give that a check, which I'd probably just do with fully defined sketch. You know, not the, not the most pretty way, but works for me. It's just, I don't want this thing scooting around. Uh, Garlic saying, really intuitive for surfacing. Yeah, that's that's definitely what I've heard, and and especially with 3D scanning. Like, I, I, I don't know if this is true. Maybe maybe Garlic, you know, but um, I heard with uh, um, yeah, the fully defined <laughs> sketches, one of Yaya's favorites. Um, but um, Garlic, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that Rhino, you can if you 3D scan an object and you get a point cloud. That's something that Rhino can do is like drape a surface over a bunch of points, which I've always been very, very curious about. I don't know, but I think it's like very, um, yeah, I think, I think that's very, very cool. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's check Discord. What's going on? Share your work. Oh wow, look at that. He says, model with power surfacing on SOLIDWORKS. I use sketch image for reference and scaling. Dude, this is really good work. Wow. Let me know if you have more angles of this. Like, this is very cool. Excellent work. That's, that's Alessio for you. Uh, Rhino, is it mesh-based? No, I think, uh, I mean, maybe Garlic can help me with this, but I believe it is analytical surface-based, like, you know, you can make, um, uh, Class A surfaces and, and stuff like that, you know, for, uh, uh, what's it called? Industrial design. That's, that's, that's the, that's the field. Oh yeah, definitely possible. That, that is cool. Very cool. Hey, it's Shams. What's going on? Glad to have you here. Uh, let's see. So, how do I want to do this? Mm, I'm just kind of like looking at this thing. Because I know there's a draft angle, as in, with this picture, it is slightly narrower on the bottom. And it basically funnels there we go. It like funnels out. The surface is going like this and like that, but it's very slight. I would have to guess be between anywhere between like one and three degrees and, you know, just enough to, um, uh, just enough to, uh, get it to release from the mold. I might, I might just take a guess. And the reason I'm doing that is like, I'm only going to make this thing pretty thin. So, I don't think the, um, yeah, I don't think the, uh, the draft angle will come to play that much. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Modelchi saying, what are you drawing today? Um, I am reusing. I have this old, uh, uh, water pitcher filter, which I can't find filters anymore. So I'm just going to use it as a regular, um, regular water pitcher, but I want to make a cap for it. So that's what I'm working on right now. And it's Danielle in the chat as well. Hey, Danielle. You know, you're, uh, you know, the episode we did together last time was such a hit. Man, that was so fun. You know, I can't wait to have you on again sometime. Oh, hello. Okay, thin features coming on, which is not good. That means there is a problem. That means that there might be a break in here. Let's see. I want to get relations showing up. Vinny and I just did a talk today. Wish you had spoken with us. Oh, we should uh, we should schedule another uh, another thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I enjoy talking about this stuff, uh, the stuff you guys do. It's just so awesome. 
Okay, so we get some shading and things look a little bit happier. Okay, we're still getting like the contour thing, but at least it's letting us pick this entire, uh, this entire thing. I might just say blind going downward. So saying top is like the very top of the picture. You know, I think I'm cool with that. And maybe just put a little bit of draft. I'm just gonna guess three degrees. Only because that's a pretty typical, um, it's a pretty t typical draft value. What did you talk about, Daniel, in your uh, in your little in, in your show? Yeah, for those of you who don't know, and and I know many of you do because like a, a ton of people saw yet last time's episode, but. Uh, you know, Danielle does a podcast called Hands On Techie Talks, where she and her me and her mentee uh, Vinia talk about uh, basically engineering with respect to sustainability. So they talk about uh, you know emerging technologies, about you know how to innovate, but also how to innovate sustainably. Specifically, environmental education for the city of San Antonio. I'm gonna have to catch that later. So. Yep, it's, it's called hands-on techie talk. How did that emoji appear? <laughs> yeah, I think YouTube, uh, I think YouTube sometimes uh, transforms your uh, your little text text smileys into other stuff. And then uh, we got Joel. What's going on, Joel? Um, all right. So I need calipers. I think they're right here because I am an organized person. I promise. All right, so something to keep in mind is with the original drawing here, I'll bring it back up just for fun. That original drawing, you know, I had this upside down here. Let's do. I had this upside down and I took a pencil and went all the way around it. So in order to have, you know, an item slip in, it actually needs to be offset by the thickness of this plastic or, or else it'll just sit on top and not actually like, you know, locate in place. Oh well, yeah. I hate it when XD turns into <laughs> I, I, I I don't know if that's the noise for it, but I, I guess it is now. <laughs> the talk was so cool because we were interviewed by a ninth grader. She is an activist and mental health advocate. Very important because, you know, yeah, school is rough. Might be. <laughs> Especially school for engineering can be uh, very rough. You know, very helpful to have a system of friends that, you know, can uh, support you in, in tough times. Yeah, definitely, you know, something I was, like, uh, thinking about, um, a lot of you might know the channel, uh, College Humor. You know, they're not as popular nowadays, but when I was in high school, they were super popular, like in, you know, 2011, 2012. And, um, you know, they just did, like, a lot of, like, college-themed comedy skits. That's That was their whole thing. But, you know, every once in a while, they would do uh, a series called College Humor's All Nighter, where all the writers in in the company would stay at the office overnight and make all these sorts of skits and i thought that was really cool and i didn't realize until just like a couple of weeks ago the reason they did that and the reason it was like you know periodic the college humor staff did that to stay up in solidarity with their viewers with college students <laughs> and um i thought that was just so so cool you know i mean not the the fact that you have to stay up, you know, that stinks, but you know, you know, that they have, they have like, they did that just to be in solidarity is like very awesome on their part. What's the podcast name and where can I find it? You know, asking Danielle, I'll, I'll uh, give her the assist here. Steamconnection.org.
Yep, I think the best way to find it is through Danielle's website. And I'll post a link to that right now. Or you can or you can listen to Danielle and, <laughs> and just like go to the audio stuff. But also, you know, just go to the site anyway and poke around, you know. Danielle's got a lot of cool stuff there. Alright, what was I doing? Yeah, I was measuring the thickness of this. And I'm just gonna try and get a small s slice so that it looks like it's sitting, you know, with the squeeze and read, it's 130 thousandths. But if I just kind of let it go, it's like 135 thousandths. A little bit more than an eighth of an inch, it would seem. So the, I think the way I'll do that, let me um, take these two faces and make them into surfaces. I think that'd be kind of cool. And I would need I need to trim this back a little bit. So this might be a little weird, but just bear with me. Um, I just thought of something. Can I have an infinite length? just regular line and trim with that. I'm gonna try a little experiment here. And uh, let's try to trim surface with that. I don't know if it's gonna be angry. No, it hates it. So it's standard sketch seven. It hates it, <laughs> okay. Uh, that I kind of expected that. Oh cool, and I can't I can't uh, not make it a construction line. Great. So I'm gonna have to delete it and just do it again, I guess. Yeah, you're saying I'd love to see a 3D scanning approach too. I would love to as well. Um, I need to do, do just a bit of research where, um, uh, where it's like, a couple years ago at least, you know, in 2018, like when I worked for uh, Design Point, the SolidWorks reseller, you know, we had a 3D scanning machine and it wasn't that great and it cost like $30,000. So it's not something that I can easily get my hands on. And even if I did, it's just, it's like, you know, I, I like to focus on like simpler reverse engineering techniques that, you know, student can do at home, you know. But if I find something like, oh, there's this smartphone app that 3D scans and is accurate, you know, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll be first in line to give that a test drive, you know? But yeah, it's a, mostly a, a matter of availability, you know? Oops, trim the wrong ends, remove. So let's get back the solid body. You can try Kinect. I actually have an old Kinect camera that I bought at a Goodwill. I actually wanted to make a robot that, you know, could like, you know, see its surroundings and navigate it. Never got around to it though. Hey Rob, have you ever given the CSWE? No, I've, I've just taken it. Um, the CSWE is what's called a self-proctored exam. So, you know, you just, assuming that you qualify for it, you know, you have the prerequisites, you pay the fee or if you, you know, sometimes I give it in giveaways and stuff like that. You get a credit and then you take it at home basically. And the, basically the mechanism that, um, allows you to I guess not cheat is the time like you can you know a lot of people don't know this when you take the CSWE you can look at books you can look at the internet but if you don't know the fundamentals you're not gonna get the challenges done in the um, in the set amount of time so that's the way that works um, DTMX 10 saying I've heard there are some photogrammetry apps and pre compiling software there's a good dedicated group on Facebook yeah, that I'm going to I'm going to look into that, you know, because like when I was looking into it, you know, two years ago, it was just kind of nothing there. It's like spend thirty thousand dollars and just get not much of anything I'm like, Ugh, OK, I'll just stick to my pencil and paper. Thank you very much. 
Um, but yeah. But then the stream will be two minutes. Importing, fixing, inconsistency, extrude the lit, intersect, maybe move faces, and that's it. Well, you know, three 3D scanning, you know, depending on how good the photogrammetry is, like you that second step fixing inconsistencies can take a long time. And I know this because I've seen, you know, my coworker work with a 3D scanner that we had at a design point. Like it can take a long time to make it not look like garbage. Which is why I was very interested with Rhino and the ability to just like a drape a surface and you know, instead of like, you know, waiting every uh, point in the data cloud, in every point in the point cloud, I'm sorry, like literally and get all this very bumpy surface, like you can get a smooth surface that is like the average position of all of them. It's very, very cool. And I don't think SolidWorks can do that. So it's, I'm a little jelly, a little jealous. But yeah, I'm going to go for a cut thicken towards the inside 135. All right, so that seems to have worked. So now we have a bit of garbage cleanup. We'll, we will um, address that in a sec. But overall, you know, we have this uh, thickness up here. So that's gonna rest on, you know, the top edge of that. And then this will just kind of rest on the inside of the, uh, uh, of the pitcher. But this garbage, what to do, what to do? Delete face is the answer. Delete face, delete this face. Oh, woohoo, are you gonna, gonna be the, oh, okay, cause it's split into two, all right. There you go, delete and patch, so just to get the, uh, the Jumbotron action replay if you want. Select these two faces, so when you delete those away, it'll attempt to extend Th that face until it meets the next one, which is the bottom one. So what happens is turns into a perfectly sharp corner. Unless you're saying I tried a fifteen thousand dollar three D scanner, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Do you remember what model that was? I'd be interested in looking into it. Garlic saying, how would you remember? Uh, how would you recommend to prepare for it? The CWE. I have access to my SolidWorks been training for some time and wanting to start working towards the CSWE. Um, my SOLIDWORKS is, you know, that's a very great asset because they do give you that, um, that paced training, you know, self-paced training that you could take at your own uh, leisure. And I think it does overall a pretty good job. Like I've seen it before and uh, I think it does a very, very good job. So I think if you're comfortable with, uh, with most of the con concepts in there, you know, and you, you, you don't, and I guess you, I guess you could say, you know, you're pretty quick at doing it and you're pretty quick at diagnosing what goes wrong and, you know, have good fundamentals with, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, direct editing tools. So for example, it's like, you know, I think something a CSWE would know is like, you know, how do you deal with that? You know, maybe the CSW challenge is to do this, but not to have this little thing. Like, how do you get rid of it? Like, can you sketch on it? No, because it's not a flat surface. Can you sketch on this side and maybe convert? Well, sure, but if you don't batch the angle exactly correctly, you're gonna get a little inconsistency there. So it's just like knowing stuff like that and like how to work through the issues that come up during modeling. That's you know, what you're seeing right in front, what I'm doing right now is like what a CSWE needs to know how to do. Um, something I will mention, and I've mentioned this dude before, but if I go to youtube.com slash C slash me, sure. And I search for SolidWorks Lucas, you know, he's uh, one of my buddies here who, um, runs a channel specifically dedicated to the certification exam. So, you know, maybe go and uh, see this channel. Here, I'll post a link to it. Maybe give him a sub. He does He does a great job. He, um, uh, by the way, uh, Lucas is, I believe, the youngest CSWE in the world. 
at, at least at his time. I don't know if it's been broken before, but when he got a CWE, he was 15 years old, which is absolutely astonishing. So he knows a thing or two. So, you know, you just check that out. I'm sure that'll help you on your way. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Oh yeah, no problem, Garlic. You know, that's that's the thing with the, uh, the Solar's community. Um, when you're all together, you know, it's it's like a form of like, I know a guy. You know, if, like, if I can't help you, it's like, I know a guy. <laughs> You know, and everyone in the Solars community is just so open and uh, and very, very helpful. You know, it's a great community to be a part of. Uh, DTMX10 saying, I've watched all of his. They are, they are great. Is the CSW like a final boss of everything you learn through the CSWP and extras? Um, I think for um, normal users, yes, the CSWE is the final boss. But it's not like the final, final boss. Like, you know, there's like the final boss at the end of the game. But, and then you, it's like, you go through the game normally, you beat the final boss, like, and you the credits rolling. Hooray, I did it. But, you know, there's some games where if you get, if you find all of the collectibles, all the treasure, all the gems, and then you go to the final boss, and it's like, oh, by the way, I have an extra form that you need to fight. There's like one of those for this. So, if you are, um... A SolidWorks reseller, you actually get access to the uh, reseller facing certification. So you have to work for a SolidWorks reseller. And the Holy Grail, when you get to there at this point, I showed this off before. Uh, doink. You get this thing, which is the Elite Application Engineer Award. Oh my god, this thing is so shiny. Oh, there we go. Can you see that? Yeah, got it in 2018, one year after I started working for uh, Design Point. But, you know, this took like 30 certifications of like, you know, it took, you know, the certified expert, basically every variation of the CSWPA, the CSWP itself. And then there's specialist exams like, you know, trainer certifications and stuff like that. It is a really pretty final boss. I like I like final boss. After he's after he's defeated, you know, um, working towards this was very very uh, very tough, as you can imagine, and especially you know trying to balance a normal workload and work on developing myself is uh, something that's not always easy to do. Which is you know why I really like that you know there's people like Danielle and company that. Um, that really uh, focus on like not only how to develop yourself for engineering, but how to do so, uh, you know, safely for your for your for your mind, for your well-being. Looks like a weapon. It could be a weapon. I will tell you the point on this very sharp. And this thing, three pounds. Like I, if I turn it like this and dropped it on myself, I I would draw blood. I'm pretty sure. But I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to put it there and just, uh, you know, we'll leave it next to, uh, I don't know if you can see Saitama there. He's saying okay. See, there's there's my piston. My piston that came out of a motorcycle engine. So there's that. And let's bring Saitama. Let's see, it's a puzzle, so I don't want to dump the pieces out by accident. But uh, there's Saitama. He says okay. He, he looks at my award and says it's okay. I'm really looking forward to starting my certification get, uh, journey. You motivate me, guys. That's I think that's the way to think about it, honestly. And that's, um, you know, what motivated me, like, back in the day. I would say back in the day, like, it was a long time ago. Um, but there was this guy who was writing blogs. I don't know if I can find it. Journey to the CSWE. No, SolidWorks. Not that CSWE. Was it this one? No, 2020. It's way too recent. It was like back in 2012.
You know it's bad when I have to go to the second page of Google. Maybe this? Let's give it a check. Yeah, it was this guy. I remember it. I remember this picture. Yeah, Jim Lucas. Like, he posted a handful of articles about, you know, taking the CSW and treating it like a journey. And I think that's really, like, a healthy way to think about it. And, uh, you know, it also helps you uh, deal with not passing sometimes. Like, I, I failed certification exams before. A handful of them, actually. You wanna if you wanna be specific, um, but yeah, you wanna make yourself better, but you know not at the cost of your own health, you know. Yeah, but back to this thing. I think I'm just gonna cut like a circle through here, just so the water can actually flow out of it. Yeah, I think I'll make it such that you know water can flow while the t while the top is on i see i see far away the cw but i'm sure that someday i'll be able to get it and i'll be sure to share that achievement with all of you i look forward to it dude and who knows it might be closer than you think you know i'll i'll, I'll be i'll be your hype man like i was for yaya here i'll you know let me fully define this and I'll go to the, I'll go to the uh, Discord. It's looking pretty good. I think I like that. Hang on. 2.75. Let's give that a scroll. Save. Save. Um, Discord. But yeah, I will be your hype man. So if I go to memes. By the way, I posted some memes, so be sure to <laughs> check that out. But just me if popping off. Yeah, look at this dude. Bruh, let's see this. Look at this dude. Look at this dude. Yeah, this is when Yaya got his, which is also amazing. He's also one of the youngest people I know to actually have that, have this certification. I mean, this, it means it means you're basically SolidWorks Jedi at that point. <laughs> uh, I I am everyone's hype man. But yeah, by the way, you know, forgot to do this. But if you if you aren't already part of the Discord, I, I am personally inviting you right now to go join. You know, we got memes. We got kitties. Kitties that do that really like their ears clean, or I guess really not. I don't really know. But um yeah, we got memes. But yeah. And Garlic saying, I'll come back here within a year with my CWE. Godspeed, my dude. I believe in you. You can do it. It's tough, but very, very doable. And I believe in you. Get that through all. I think what I can do is my phone buzzing. That's no, just an Instagram. notification so we got that I definitely don't want to use all of this material so I'm probably gonna shell this I don't ever do, do it a, a quarter or an eighth of an inch excuse me like that and then I could just put some fillets here not bad normally I would put fillets in here but that's just gonna use a little bit extra material with no tangible benefit you know this is this isn't going to uh, this is gonna be this isn't going to be under such huge load so I think we're we're pretty close to done here. 
you know, something I want to try again. Like, I don't... Here. I'll be right back. I'm going to go take a picture of this. It'll probably take me just a minute once I find my phone. Oh, I lost it. Where's my phone, dude? Come back. Man, I seriously just misplaced my... Oh, it's all, it's all the way back here. Fine, guys. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to take a picture of this thing, and then I'll try something very cheeky. Did you miss me? Alright. I gotta upload something to Discord, so hang on. And then Yaya saying, in case you guys don't know, I'm making a series of articles on LinkedIn called Journey to Certs. That's awesome, dude, where I share the resources I use, some tips and tricks, as well as my personal view. That is gonna be very, very helpful. You know, because the CSW is like this big ugly goal and you don't know how to achieve it but you know when you t get people talking about it like you know myself but also you and like your view that's going to be very valuable and DTMX saying oh I tried to ask on inside with the pencil lead model did you import the label graphic or did you fully recreate it in software oh we can take a look at that I post an article every Saturday the day I got my CWE and I posted about I posted about the M, uh, the CSWA, the CSWP, and the CSWPA weldments. Very good. And Sebastian saying he saw that. That's good. Would the fillets on the first layer not warp when printing? I typically use chamfers. Um, I think there's. I think they're actually if you're talking about these ones i don't think they'll warp but actually now that you mention it i think it'll look like garbage because it'll it'll have this ugly stepping so i might change that all right hang on do 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 Hey, now let me download that picture. Coming up next Saturday, sheet metal. Very nice. Sheet metal. Save image. Uh, let's put it in the water picture. picture. Yeah, it's really awesome that you're all getting connected together. That's, I mean, that's what, that's how we, uh, that's how we succeed the best. We just, we stick together and we help each other out. You know, that's why, that's why I made the channel. That's why I made the discord because, you know, there are many answers that I, there are many questions that I can answer, but I'm not available all the time. And, you know, there are some questions that I just can't answer, you know, I just don't have the answers to. So just, you know, really tapping into the community is the way to go. It's all about, you know, I know a guy or I know a gal, you know. Um, but yeah, what I wanted to do, let me try. I think this would be kind of funny. Um, scene. How do I do this? Edit scene. So the background, I can use an image and then go and use this picture that I just took. There you go, that is my, uh, that's the desk in my office. So I'm gonna have to turn on perspective view. <laughs> DT Max saying, oh man, I failed the, <laughs> failed the sheet metal twice because I didn't read the questions properly. That'll get you, you know, um, 
And you're not the only one to do that either. Um, I know plenty of very talented modelers that um, that failed SolidWorks exams. Like I look at their talent, like yeah, you definitely got it. And they and they come back and like I failed. I'm like oh man, what happened? It's like oh, I didn't read. It's like yeah, you know, it's a it's it's not only a SolidWorks skills, but it's also attention to detail at the same time. So yeah. But you 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 work on that and you get uh you get better at your attention to detail stuff and yeah you gotta make sure to read the whole thing you know yeah I knew I have to like I mean I got. Yeah, I don't know if I can actually do this because I would have to like somehow get this behind in like some kind of composite layer. And this is like Photoshop that I'm not able to do very well. Yeah, because it does does not look very does not look very convincing. And that's sad. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just gonna scrap this idea. Uh, that I did I did do this before. Like if you don't have like as many um, you know transparent stuff, or I could just like you know model the picture. I might just do that actually. You know, just kind of get a get a mock up of the picture. Yeah, that's that's probably the way way to go. And just uh, just take a regular screenshot of it. All right, so let's get this and just put this to none. But yeah, so let's get that same sketch that I use this, right? And that means I actually need to get the picture again and do my best to measure, you know, how this thing comes to, how this thing get, gets its shape, so. We'll try, we'll try our best, you know, but it's just, it's just for show, you know, but for the 3D printing thing, I have that done. Probably don't need the circular cutout to go through the top part of the lid. Oh, I see what you're saying that. Well, I think it has to go through it a little bit because if I did that, well, or even I go offset the other way like that like if I put this on top this is still gonna uh, block all of the flow because it's like a perfect outline or perfect as perfect as it gets so it does need a, a little bit of a maybe it doesn't need it as as large but you know you can save some material I think it'll be fine Okay. Yeah. So I think actually your your idea would work if there if uh, the tip actually you know wasn't all in one plane here, but if it actually dipped down a little bit, that would actually work. And actually, some pictures do that. I've seen that before. So I definitely see what you're saying there, Matthew. What is this? So we're showing that. Let's try and get an overall length. Man, the show the show is a uh, man so disorganized. My measuring tape's over there, so I gotta go get it. <laughs> Bert, BRB. Got it. All right, all right. So let's get an overall height. This, oops. 
It's like nine and three quarters. Any Harry Potter fans out there? Uh, there we go. Nine and three quarters. Yeah, here, let me turn off perspective because that's, you know, racking my brain a little bit. Let's save just in case something bad happens. I think what would be very helpful. Give me a minute, I'm just studying this. King's Cross. <laughs> ah, yeah, I see. So I need to find the centroid of. You see that slot kind of shape there? Where is the centroid here? Because when I drew this, because it's got the little spout, the origin of the part is actually shifted from where the centroid of the bottom is. So I need some way to find that out. And it's kind of tough. So assuming that, you know, that a centroid is, maybe I'm overthinking. Yeah, I'm definitely overthinking this. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'll probably just sketch and just put some distance backwards from the origin and just test. I think that's the way to the way to go here. Matthew saying, I passed a CSW a few weeks ago. ago. I agree, Solar Sukas has it was a great resource. I'm glad to hear it, man. You know, he's he's been working real hard to put that together for uh, you know the people that need it. Let me try this. I get a center point slot. That I don't, it's close, but I think I need to make these tangent arcs as well. So let me actually get a line. Yeah, this is gonna be a weird technique. So we do that, and then that, and that, and then that, and then get rid of that. There we go, get this kind of system here. And let's put the center lines along here. Yeah, we gotta be very careful. I might assign these just dummy radii so they don't fly all over the place while I try and get them situated. There we go. So let's see if I can get like an overall yeah, it's hard because there's a fillet in this, but I'm gonna say four inches. We're just trying to estimate. We're not trying to reverse engineer the uh, the picture itself. You know, we're just trying to get you know kind of a silhouette of where the where the picture is. Okay, so something like that. So far, so good. Glad to hear that's a good resource and has my blessing. I felt like I was cheating for a while. No, not dude. You're not cheating on the exam unless you, of course, you take the exam, get up from the chair, and you get another expert to do it for you. Like, that's straight up cheating. Don't do that. But, um, no. Um, when you, uh, uh, to studying for the exam and even taking the exam, you have the whole internet to your disposal. So, you know, you don't have to memorize, like, oh, you know, how do I... Is, if if uh, a question says make a coordinate system here and you haven't made a coordinate system in like two years you want to refresh it just solidworks coordinate systems help enter just read oh, okay you gotta select this this and that all right and get back to exam like that's totally okay but um you know google isn't going to help you if you say solidworks uh zero thickness geometry error help 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 enter 
Like that that is um probably worst case scenario. I get rid of one of these dummies and say that these are equal. I will say that these are horizontal. Oh, okay, too much. It might be implied with what I've got already, so let me take that out. Um, try and get that there. See if I can grab the midpoint of that. And I need to get it to the other side, so I'm gonna try and click and say, reverse the sense. Okay. <sighs> Not the worst thing ever. No, this is actually kind of bad. Can I say, get out of here. This and this vertical. Relax, I'll try and relax some constraints here. Yeah, let me step back a few. So I wonder why vertical's not valid here. You know, something we could try, maybe this. Oh, I'm being dumb. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so you, you, you guys probably see it, right? I'm trying to make it vertical when this is the horizontal direction. Look at the origin. You see how, um, you see how the origin has two red arrows, one taller than the other? The tall arrow is vertical. The short one is horizontal. But yeah. Horizontal. Now that works. Look at that. Ah, oh, sheesh. Yeah, let me give this a dummy dimension. And then I can say... There we go, reverse to the other side. So we'll pause right there because Yaya is saying I should check out something, which I will happily oblige. Share your work. Ah, very sick. Gripper animation, models in mind. But it's still great practice though. I really like what you did with the camera there. Are you changing the uh, focal length as well? And then here. That's pretty sick. Pretty awesome. I'm really glad I found someone who's like, you know, as dorky as animations as I am. <laughs> it's very, very, very impressive work. It's a little bit like R2-D2. <laughs> it's been a while since I've worked on someone else's SOLIDWORKS files. I had to remodel some parts before assembling it. Yep. And then, yeah, the classic comedy tragedy <laughs> thing that I put there. Ah, great work, my man. Nah, only changing the distance. Oh, very good. Very good. All right. So I'm going to leave this as is. This I measured, and these two are dummies. So let me get rid of this one and this one. So it's, I can't really measure the radius of that, but I can measure overall length. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. So it looks like at seven and a half from for the um, from here to here. So, you know, let me step that up a little by little just to see what it does. Well, it's we're good. Seven point five. All right. So I guess what is left is kind of a measure of how flat these sides are. I'm actually, I guess we can take a guesstimate of what that diameter is. So we're just gonna try and, so it honestly looks close to three and a quarter, three or three and three eighths. Yeah, I don't really know, but. Three point two five over two because this is specifying a radius. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. You know, we'll, we'll see how it looks, and that's fully defined. Save, 
And let's try a loft from here to here. And it doesn't like this sketch very, very much. So what I might try and do is roll back to where I had this original profile. So hide, start a new one, and just say convert entities, which is guaranteed, you know, a perfect loop. So I'm, I'm gonna, with that sketch 10 in mind, I'm gonna take that and loft it to here. And this is going to be uh, also interesting because we don't have the same number of segments, so it's wanting to twist a little bit. So, a couple of ways to get around that. And I think what I'm going to do, first I'll do another sketch and do a fit spline. I think that's how I'll do it. So, instead of having four segments, I'll bring all of these together and fit spline makes it one segment. Which means I also have to do that to the same thing with... Um, sketch 10. So fit spline makes those two and it makes it one. And then now I should be able to loft with absolute impunity. Oops, did I click on the wrong one? I think so. Hide. And hide sketch 10. Yeah, it has a point in different locations, but I should be able to adjust that. Here to here. Mwahaha. I am all powerful. Hey, my, uh, my little triad's gone. Where did it go? Oh, that's, that's annoying. Oh, let me get this, and then I can just kind of drag that, like, yoink. Get out of here. Yoink. To straighten up the profiles a little bit. And then I can say, end constraint normal to profile. All right, well. Maybe do something like that. I'm probably gonna have to trim this down a little bit. Or, here, let's, here, I'll apply this. Here, I need to um, unmerge results. SolidWorks strikes back. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so which one is... So let's take this, edit the sketch plane, and make it just un, the one underneath. Oh, that one's not planar? You son of a biz nasty. I mean, I guess I can trim. That's probably the, that's probably the, the smart way of going about it. Um, there is a surface trim that I used before. Yeah, this one. So let's get rid of that. I use this for the surface trim, so using this, we're using the same sketch. And what I can do is actually, you know, with that, this uh, extrude cut, set it to through all both, and the this little arrow wants to eat all the materials, so make sure only this body is selected and there we go should have that in place go. and before I shell we're gonna get a nice big fillet here like that and then we can shell out this body like that and then put small fillets. Uh, I guess I should have resized that before trying that out. Will you participate in Two Tall Toby's tourney? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> it's what it was so fun last time, but I've just been like, you know, hecka busy. You know, I haven't really been able to make it out to some of the streams. Hmm. Uh, let's do 30 thousandths. There we go. Oops. Meant to hide, not hide. 
That's pretty good, I think. And you can even... Do that. And then... Let's do plastic. You know, I wish I had a like a, a pre-baked 3D printing texture, but what I might do is like, I really like the, uh, the large spark erosion kind of texture. It's like, a, like that. So it actually looks like something, you know? Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I mean, I suppose I can also do the handle too. Why not? Yeah, I'll probably just do a simple handle because it's like, uh, like I was saying before, you know, just to kind of like show the audience like that. I just don't show a play and I'm like, that's the model of the day. And like, that's it. <laughs> just to give it some context. Um, all right, so let's do that. Maybe you see it from this side. I mean, it's just, I'm just, it's just the perspective that you'll see. What will you print it on and with which filament? Um, yeah, we don't really know yet. I guess there's the matter of um, cost, of course. But, um, you know, I do get some of my filaments sponsored, so it's not too huge of a deal. Oh God, all these arcs are gonna be such a pain. We'll, we'll deal with it. Um, I think the best one of actually fitting this workpiece is the Mark Forge, which is the most expensive to print on. Though, you know, the walls are pretty thin. You know, I can print with um, very light uh, uh, infill as well. It's, it'll be the nylon, which is very, uh, uh, very chemically inert, which is good, which means it'll last a long time. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to take a couple of guesses here. So it's gonna be like. Pretty close to the, to the top, so let's get the end of this, and this is going to be like kind of this arbitrary dimension. It's going to be overbuilt because I'll use um, intersect to make it fit perfectly. So that has no significance. I'll just put in a bean, so we know that. I didn't measure that. It's just how much I choose to overbuild it, and just to help staple it down. I'll put it over there. What does that look like? I think that looks pretty accurate. It's a new water bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's a so it's one water water bottle. You just down the gullet straight from the spout. <laughs> okay, you can give this an overall length, I suppose. Two, and let's get an angle like that. Let's do 89. I do want this to pull us back so that this can curve a little bit. Uh, 30? Sure. And 75. And how low does it go? Questions. Probably around 7 to 8 inches. Yeah, I'm not. Twelve. And what can I do? Maybe an angle. Fifteen. No, I don't like fifteen. Thirteen. I like thirteen. Is nylon food grade technically not? But uh, it's my water pitcher. <laughs> I'll. I'll um, I'll own up to it. 
Um, it, it, there are many, f- you know, FDA stamped food grade nylons. I just know like it doesn't leach out that much. Oh yeah, thanks for the uh, assist there, Andy. So let's get, so to sweep, let's save. And then remember, you can select a line and its endpoint and you get a plane right at the end there. And you can use that to sketch for your, for your sweep. And with that, I'll get an ellipse. I'll say make pierce horizontal and the width I can measure right here one and a quarter the height of we would be cool to see a, a VL, uh, uh, the FC logo yeah I can do that sure why not might as well. I actually do do that a lot to the to the parts that I make. So point five, and then say sweep. Now let me get out of the sketch. So, um. Oh no. Did I bug it out? It looked here. Let me just rebuild because it looks like it's. I'm editing it. Oh, we're good. We're good. We are good. So that about this. And that does seem normal, which is good. Make sure merge result is off. And that's how it looks like, but um, it's going too far in. But if I go to indent, not indent, I'm so sorry, um, intersect, the other I one, and click this and that, say create intersecting regions, say intersect, and now we have to click the bodies we wanna keep, or select regions to exclude, I'm sorry. So I don't want that, and I don't want that. And that looks normal, so I say merge result, and hopefully that'll all go together. Very nice. It lost its appearance, but that's okay. We can give it back to it. There we go. I think that's pretty good. So now we get get you get just a little bit of context. All right, but um, you know, I'm not not one to disappoint. So, you know, if you want to watch how I deboss a logo. Um, definitely if you have your like own company or, you know, channel like I do, and I have like that logo that is very consistent, it's very well worth your time to make a, um, a SolidWorks block. So, you know, for example, what I would do, well, not this SolidWorks block, I'm sorry. I promise that wasn't a scripted joke or anything like that. But yeah, so let me do that. And maybe you'll bring in a sketch picture, low resolution. I'm just repurposing this. And let's say that, you know, this, uh, this protractor was your, was your logo. So what you would do, or like, just, let's just say the, the hour one. So I don't have to trace as much. So what it would do is trace that best of your ability you know something like that you know if there's any symmetry you could put it as dimensions and stuff like that great um what you would do at this point you can actually select all the sketch entities and go up here and say make make block so all of these will be fused into like one entity and you could say well I want to click here to place these uh, to place these uh, this block so now I have this one block 
but it only exists in this part file. So if I right click on the block here and say save block, now we're cooking with gas because now if I'll say sample logo. Now I can actually save that on my hard drive and then I can just get rid of this whole part file. So, you know, let's go even back to yeah, to this one. So now I can sketch on top of this and instead of make block, I can say insert block. Go to where you saved it. And now you can insert the shape. And then you can resize it using that. I might have to make that even smaller so you can stamp it just like that. And you can actually, uh, well, you should be able to put relations on it if it'll let me click on it. Oh, you're very squirrely. There you go. So I'll, I'll just say fix. I'm not supposed to do that, but you know, this is just a demonstration. So you, now that's fixed in place and you don't have to sketch it. There you go. So I did that with my logo. So if you're wondering where the next bit comes from, that's where, that's where it is. So, so sketch, insert block and where did I save my block? <laughs> good question. Here, let me get my good old tool search everything. Be okay. By the way, if you don't have search everything by void tools, very good software basically hard drive indexer. So I just search SLD BLK and I'll say logo. I got an Apple logo, virtual flat logo. I think that's just the, the actual flat symbol. So full block logo virtual flat. That's what I need. Oh, you could actually make it as a library feature too. I suppose you could do that as well. So I'm just going to click and drag that. You see, it's way too huge. That's better. And then rotate by 90. Or I guess 270 since I'm right handed. Get it like right there. Okay. And we'll just fix it in place. Yeah, so I, I made it such that when you click, it, that's the centroid of the logo. So it, it kind of just placed itself. Yeah, although I could, I should probably move it like, you know, a little bit to the, to the left. So I guess I just changed my mind about that. Oh, it's stuck to the origin, isn't it? I probably should update this block to have, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Oops. Fix. So now I can import that and then extrude cut. And the resolution of my printers, you know, let's make this, uh, you know, make it a couple layers deep. So one five millimeters. Hmm. 7,000 looks a little, and let's make it 0.3 millimeters. Oh, hang on. We got a doubly nested contour we got to deal with. Clear. I just got to pick each of these. So I think that's the only disadvantage about this, but other than that, now we have debossed the logo. And if I Yeah, so now we have something like that. And now I guess, you know, before I, you know, call this, what happened to my music? Why is it not repeating? I don't know how long I went without music. It's eerily quiet in here. Are we back? There we go. But just to end this off, so what it would do is, you know, we have two solid bodies delete keep body but so so I can say keep the, the thing I want to export like that 
save uh, file save as uh, STL just go into your options and I usually save it as fine if not I'll go even I'll, I'll go even higher if I want you know very very nice smooth curves and stuff like that but it's not as critical so I'm just gonna put fine and you know this these settings are are all good okay and just put it in the water picture folder. Okay, so it's saved. And now, hold on, I might have to get my account info. One sec. I'm gonna try it with the Mark Forge stuff. Iger. Bear with me, my dudes. Incompatible browser. You must use Google Chrome. All right, well. You heard it here first, folks. Use Chrome. Iger.io. fit we do it like that there should be no uh, should be no support material necessary and I'll say no to use well actually it does need a little bit so it can render the logo so yeah we'll turn that back on uh, infill let's see if we can minimize that because this does not need to be very strong at all Much this is as I take a sip of my drink. Well, that's a nice thing too about 3D printing nowadays is like a lot of it is, um, you know, a lot of it is. Uh, a lot of automation involved so it's like eleven dollars is kind of expensive you know we'll see if it even fits on the Sindo it can it can pull up that slicer too can check the layers so it'll do one two three layers of the uh, logo and then it patches it up There's a little bit of fill in there too. Suppose I can make it a little bit more cost effective if I reduce the number of roof and floors to two so it doesn't have to make all of it, but it might make the surface finish a bit worse. We'll see. And actually, while I'm here, 3D locks desktop. So that's the, f the slicer for the Sindo machine. No. Oh, <laughs> reduced it by a dollar. So, okay, so that's what we have to work with here. So for Sindo, what do you got for me, my dude? Uh, load model. Water pitcher. to rotate this oops oh man it actually fits wow just barely yeah this is definitely um, I think I might do it with a Sindo printer first just to see if it if it fits the way I expect it to because at this point this is PLA it's not as durable as the uh, nylon but I think you know in terms of cost this this won't be beat so you know, let's go to settings 
Oh, four, uh, 0.4 millimeters is super crunchy, so let's maybe put that down to 0.2. And let's generate some G-code. So, 8-hour print, which is similar, so 65.3 grams. Where is my calculator? So, I when I um, do costing for PLA, I usually assume it to be $20 per kilogram, 20 US dollars. And I know you can find, you know, very basic white ones for like $15 or the fancier ones are closer to 30, but just to get like a ballpark number, I always go for $20 per kilogram. So to figure out the number of kilograms, we divide that 65.3 by a thousand, of course, and then times 20. So this is a dollar and 30 cents to print out, but definitely a lot more cost effective. So I'll probably try this out first, but you know, just for funsies, um, uh, what is, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm having a brain fart here. Form labs. Don't I have the form lab slicer on this too? Creel, hello? Hold on, I gotta... Preform. Let me see. Preform. There we go. The app is called Preform. So we'll see how much it costs to do in the form labs if it can fit it. Form three, let's do fastest print. Rigid 10K, sure. Let's do that. Yeah, we'll dismiss that. I did a butter dish lid on my printer, says Tamborora Station. It worked out good. Great practice run for me sketching up a scan outline drawing. Yeah, that's that's really really that's really good. And honestly it's just like you just gotta practice with the little things, you know. Can I I forget. I actually don't use this software very often as you could probably tell. I don't know how to get the STL in there. I'm going to try to just Here you go. <laughs> Click and drag. Models outside build volume. Yeah, ignore. Yeah, it's too big. Sad. So yeah, the form won't be able to do it unless. Oh, hello. Yeah, it looks like it's just a little bit too large, which is fine. You know, it's not a knock against that printer because it's you know, the form labs is a great, great printer. It, you know, especially with, um, just in terms of surface finish, it's just, it's just phenomenal. But yeah, so I can't fit it into here. I can fit into here and I can fit into here too, although it's expensive. So I think I'll give it to the Sindo to handle and, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. And I think, I think that that's probably where I'll end my stream. I don't know if I'll be able to get the actual, yeah, this, this will take eight hours. So I'm probably gonna have to update you guys tomorrow or something um, uh, for, for that. I think this will be fun. Rob, have you ever discussed your setup in a video? Not really, actually. I, I think I've alluded to it, but there's been a lot of changes. You know, I have all my machines here. I have my screens that, you know, Yaya doesn't really know why I have four of them, but you know. <laughs> Um, you know, maybe I'll try and explain myself to the to the planet Earth why my setup is the way it is, but um, no, I haven't done that yet, and uh, that is something that I should do. But, you know, let's take a look at the overall model again. So I think the post, you know, if I just suppress the body, delete, keep, like that. Perspective. Yeah, you'll probably see something similar to this in your feed tonight 
So I think that's where I'll leave the stream for tonight. So yeah, if you enjoyed this and you're not subscribed, I would urge you to subscribe. You know, I'm all about that community and you know, we're all about helping each other out and just learning cool things along the way. So subscribe would go a long way for me and liking the video and you know, so more people can find us. I think that'd be awesome. Um, if you haven't joined the Discord, I would recommend doing so. We'd love to have you in there. As I said before, I am personally inviting you even. So, you know, you just use this link. Or if you need my other uh, social medias, you know, Instagram, Twitter, you know, if you, whatever way you want to consume my content, I got several ways. So you can find it through this link tree. Got my LinkedIn in there, you know, feel free to connect. And, you know, I'm just here to help, guys, little by little, one project at a time. Garlic saying, thanks for the great vibes. That's, that's awesome. That's, that's the vibe that I'm going for. You know, chill and model. So with that, I'll see you next time. And thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you.